Mr. Bill Hartman. Good evening. My name is Phil Hartman, and yes, I bleach my teeth. <laughs> There's an old saying that if you want to stay young, stay active. And if that is true, we have some of the youngest people you've ever seen right here in the field of comedy. These kids are up there in the 80s and above, still breaking up audiences all over the world. And only a few weeks ago, right here in this very room, Mr. Television, Uncle Milty, told 85 jokes in 85 seconds to commemorate his own 85 birthday, <laughs> which proves he is slowing down. <laughs> Let's take a look back at that remarkable career. Introducing America's number one television star, who just returned from Washington after paying his income tax, Milton Berle. If you were watching television on Tuesday night, you must have been watching Milton Burrow. <laughs> Beginning June 8, 1948, theaters and restaurants were half filled or even empty every Tuesday night because people stayed home to watch Mr. Television. In fact, the Texaco Star Theater became so popular that Milton Berle was credited as being the greatest salesman of television sets ever. We know him best for being the one who brought comedy to television through his hilarious gags. And his outrageous outfits, which he introduced at a very early age. Thanks a million. He was first seen wearing a dress when he was still just a toddler. At age four, he won a contest impersonating Charlie Chaplin and immediately became a successful child model and actor. At six, he made his screen debut with Charlie Chaplin in Tilly's Punctured Romance. And at 12, he made his first Broadway appearance in Floridora. The young Burl explored every medium available. He was one of the first comedians to have his own radio show. In nightclubs, his bookings were often extended from two weeks to more than 40 weeks. Hi, uh, I'm at the front of at the uh, Paradise Restaurant over here. It's a marvelous restaurant, very beautiful. Three waiters to each table. <laughs> One gives you the check, the other two revive you. It's a wonderful place. He was a huge hit on Broadway in such shows as the Ziegfeld Follies. But in 1937, Milton and his mother left for Hollywood, where he appeared in more than 30 films. But it was television that changed his life forever. Milton had finally found the perfect stage to showcase his multiple talents. I'm Uncle Milty. Mathematics. One and one is two. Two and two is four. Four, four is eight. Eight and eight is sixteen. Sixteen, yeah. sixteen. Yeah. Then there's geography. Yeah. What is the highest note you can see? What is your high note? C. I'd be using C, 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 breath. Take a breath. <laughs> Only breathe before you sing C, C, breath, not too nasal, from the head loose. C, 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 not... Milton Berle has kept us entertained for more than 81 years because he knows what's funny. Slapstick hokum comedy today, I think, at this day, it isn't funny anymore, Sam. It isn't funny anymore. You're putting me on. No, I mean that. It isn't funny Come anymore. on, Milton. I don't buy that. I heard you lecture on comedy yeah. at UCLA. And do you remember when you were telling the students about a Law and Hardy picture yeah. where Oliver Hardy got the biggest yuck in the world mm -hmm. because he did this <laughs> to Stan Laurel. Then he proceeded to do that. <laughs> then he gave it one of these. <laughs> Now, 
Now, you mean to say that's not funny? That's not funny. Do you remember when you were talking about the Keystone Cops and you did the stand-in bit prior to that, the makeup man came over to you, I remember it very well, and went, Makeup! Now, just be fair. You mean to tell me that's not funny? That's not funny. Do you remember when you were talking of the Keystone Cops? If you were a Keystone Cop, right, and I was a guy with a seltzer water, you mean to tell me if I spritzed you like this... <laughs> That's not funny? That's not funny. Now, Milton, you mean to say, if I took this pie... And went like this? That's funny. <laughs> Tonight, after receiving every accolade the industry has to offer, Milton adds one more honor to his legendary and ongoing career, his induction into the Comedy Hall of Fame. Milton, congratulations. Come up and accept your award. <laughs> Thank you very much, Phil. You know, ladies and gentlemen, in my long career in show business, I have been the recipient of countless awards, trophies, testimonials, and plaques. But tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I must confess, this award is without a doubt the most recent No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. At this, at this stage, I'm glad the other comedians did my warm-up. At this stage of my life, I'm really thrilled, really thrilled, honestly, to receive this prestigious award <laughs> while I can still lift it. <laughs> and now, if you do me a favor, Phil, sorry to wake you up. Sir. If you do me a favor, <laughs> would you hold that and stand over there? Yes. Because <laughs> I work alone. <laughs> I'm not, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But I would like to leave you with, uh, how shall I say, my own special lyrics to a great standard show business song that best expresses how I feel about all of you and the wonderful world of entertainment. See how it goes, just a I've had quite a hectic career. Every year brought a smile and a tear, and I've enjoyed 
every time I'd appear for your entertainment. I've known ever since I was five that in life I could only survive on a stage keeping laughter alive for your entertainment. To me, every night is an opening night just to bring you a laugh is my one big delight and I'm sure that Irving Berlin was right when he said there's no biz that ever compares to showbiz. <laughs> Those years, gee, how quickly they flew, everyone so refreshingly knew. And though I've spent over 80 with you, I'd give 80 more as long as it's for your entertainment. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.